Okay, it's like vaping. Some say high-frequency trading is terrible. Others say it's actually benefited investors by reducing the transaction costs per trade. And yet others say it's just plain old math. The problem is I've written two books explaining how to make you a better investor, and nothing in my books competes with the algorithms that you learn as a high-frequency trader. George Calhoun is the director of the Quantitative Finance Program at the Stevens Institute of Technology in New Jersey, and he helps train the future quants, the quantitative analysts who don't think they're doing anything wrong. They're just I, learning how to be more efficient. I think they're just learning the fundamentals of uh, modern technology. Electronic mar Markets went electronic a, a couple of generations ago. But and the fundamentals of technology are different than the fundamentals of investing. And I think that's where these two worlds are colliding. Well, I don't think HFT is about investing. I think it's about market making. That's where the, the tail of this long trend of electronic markets has ended up is, uh, with speed. They're making the market right down at the microscopic level. Tell me what that level. means to, to the average investor. Making the market is a very, very important concept. But what does it mean to them? Well, if you're an official market maker, it means you're supposed to stand there and accept a bid or a, an ask. You're supposed to, to provide um, liquidity to the market. If someone wants to sell, you buy. If someone wants to buy, you sell. Uh, a formal market maker has an obligation to do that. And it, What's happened, I think, one of the aspects of the HFT phenomenon that's got people worked up a little bit is that the HFT have kind of stepped into that role. They do that. They effectively right. perform that function, but they don't have a fiduciary obligation to perform that function. So the, the flash crash, a lot of people diagnose what happened there is that the HFT players, when they saw the volatility in the market, they backed away. Right. Because and they do not have a fiduciary responsibility like the official market makers do. If you go down to the floor of the right. knock stock exchange, New York Stock Exchange, you see those. But the world has changed because it used to be a few exchanges, and now there are many exchanges. Well, that's another part of the problem. To be a player today, you have to connect to 50 different venues, and you have to put the prices up, and there are you know, short... Uh, uh, delays in, in the right. transmission of those so, prices, so you, and you can work on that. So you, the, the high-frequency traders can take advantage of the fact that there are all these different markets, the prices will be a little bit different in each one, and they can make their money not on whether or not the CEO is a good CEO or no, the company no, has no. growth perspectives. Uh, they, they're perspective. not thinking about any of that. They're not, they're not involved in the fundamentals, and they're not involved in the stock very long. They're involved there for a few seconds, perhaps. What they're looking at is, uh, you know, at the it's like quantum physics. They they tell us down mm -hmm. at the level of the at the space time, you know, there's this quantum foam phenomenon where things are jittery yeah. on, on a small. The prices are the same way. They're making their money off of that small little jitter in the market. It, what, what discipline are you tra are you trained in? Uh, I actually came out of the wireless industry a long time ago, and I I interacted with the markets. By raising money in the market, okay, IPOs. And but these these kids at the Stevens Institute of Technology, which we did a story on, it's right across the river. They are mathematicians, engineers, software engineers. What are they? The, the kids in my program, it's undergraduate yeah. program. They take six math courses, six computer science courses. That's their core. So they're going to take. They actually take more math than an engineer will take. Okay, that's the the currency of they, the market. But they are not market experts. They are not people who study we, finance necessarily. No, no, no. We we do. Provide also, the, I mean, they have to know what they're doing. When they push that green right. button, you want them to understand what right. the economic substance is behind that act. So, yes, they have to understand the capital markets. They have to understand how corporations function, the legal frameworks that they operate in. Uh, we have courses in market microstructure, in regulation. and These are all important things. But like, they, you don't look at this mess and say we're responsible for it. You're not, you're not thinking of yourselves as, as party to what a lot of people think is, is damage to the market. Well, <laughs> are you asking me who I think is responsible for I am. It? I All am. right. I, I think you've created, the, the, we've created a situation where the exchanges, we've pushed them to the wall in a competitive model, and they are looking for ways to raise revenue. They've created these special pricing arrangements with the traders. They've set up the games, and the HFT are paying to play. So now they said, we'll make money out of renting space next to our servers yes. to people who can afford to put their servers we'll next to ours. We'll rent space to you. We'll give you, if you'll pay us uh, for, for the feed 200 microseconds before the general market gets yeah. it, there are, you know, the, there are people like uh, the Michigan uh, Consumer Sentiment Index last yeah. year was, was found to be doing this same game. I, Giving I their think information out ahead just of to somebody, bit, just a little bit ahead of the to, public. To, to a, a well-paying customer. Yeah. Do you blame the customer for that, or do you blame the institution that set up that game that the customer is saying, sure, I'll pay to play? 
What an interesting discussion, George. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. George Calhoun is the Director of Quantitative Finance at the Stevens Institute of Technology in New Jersey.